Algebra 1, number 3.5b, we're solving equations. We're going to talk about identity equations and equations that have a variable on both sides with parentheses. And remember, when we see parentheses, we usually need to use the distributive property first, don't we? So an identity is an equation that is true for all acceptable replacements. What does that mean? Well, it's an equation that is true for any variable value. Look at this equation. This is an identity because x can be any value. On this side, we've got 2x plus 3 plus 2x. When we combine the like terms, we get 4x plus 3. Well, that's what it is on this side. So if x was a 1, then it would be a 1 on both sides because that's x. And they would stay true. If x was a 2, it would still be true. If x was a 3, it would still be true. If x was a negative 99, it would be true because it's balanced. See? That's an identity. When an equation can have any value for the variable and it'll be true, then it's an identity. Okay? Makes you think of identity property, doesn't it? All right, let's take a look at this equation. We've got n minus 2 in parentheses and we've got a 3 on the outside of the parentheses. And, and then we're going to subtract 1 and that equals 2 minus a 5 is outside the parentheses with the n plus 5. See that? So the very first thing we're going to do is use the distributive property first. And we're going to distribute this 3 to the n and then 3 minus and then minus the 3 times 2, aren't we? So we get 3n minus 6. See? Because we got 3 times a negative 2, it's a negative 6. And we drop down our negative 1. And on this side, we've got 2 minus 5n and that's added to a negative 5 times a positive 5, isn't it? So that's going to be a negative 25. So now we've got this as our equation, and we can combine the like terms. The negative 6 and the negative 1 make a negative 7, and this positive 2 and negative 25 make a negative 23. So now we can use the addition property of equality to create zero pairs. And we do that right here. This minus 5n, we can add 5n, create a zero pair right here and get rid of it, right? So now we just have negative 23 on that side. And we have to add the 5n to this side to keep it balanced. So now we've got 8n on this side. We drop down our negative 7. And we've got 8n minus 7 equals negative 23. Now let's get rid of that 7 by adding a 7. Because it's a negative 7, we'll add a 7. And it'll create a zero pair and get rid of it. Now we've got to add a 7 to this side. Negative 23 plus 7 is a negative 16. It brought it back closer up towards the 0 when we added that 7. Now we've got 8n equals negative 16. And we can use the multiplication property of equality and divide and multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the coefficient. Okay? Remember, the coefficient is the number that's in front of the variable. The reciprocal is its flip upside down version. So if we put a 1 underneath it as an 8 over 1, because that still equals 8, right? We flip it around as 1 eighth, and we multiply both sides by the 1 eighth. Okay? It's always the, the, the coefficient that we do that to. Okay? We get 8 over 8n equals negative 16 over 8. See? And that's going to give us a negative 2. We get our friend the invisible 1 that we don't need to write, so we get n is equal to negative 2. Now this is not an identity. We had 8n minus 7 equals negative 23, and when we used our addition property of equality to get rid of this, we ended up with 8n equals negative 16, see? And can any number be put here for n and make this a true statement? Can we put a 3 here? Well, 8 times 3 is 24. That doesn't equal negative 16. Can we put a 1 there? No. 8 times 1 is 8. It doesn't equal negative 16. What about a 5? 8 times 5 is 40. That doesn't equal negative 16. So this is not an identity because we can't just put any number in there to make it work. It has to be only a negative 2 to make it work. So it's not an identity. An identity, you can stick any number in for the x and it'll make both sides of the equation true. See? It'll make the equation true. All right? Now, we did this by using the multiplication property of equality and multiplying the coefficient by its reciprocal right here, okay? I know people hate all those big math words, so 
we multiplied both sides by the flipped upside down version of this 8 that's next to the variable, which is a 1 8 okay? We could have made it a lot quicker by just dividing by that coefficient 8. We divide both sides by the 8, and we don't have to do all that fraction multiplication. We just divide both sides by 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. We get an n on this side, just 1n. And negative 16 divided by 8 is negative 2, and it goes much quicker, see? We generally like to do this when there's fractions, and we're going to do that coming up. It helps us get rid of fractions, in fact. We can check it by substituting the negative 2 for the n to see if it works. Everywhere that there was an n, we put a negative 2 there. So it said 3 times n, so that means 3 times negative 2, and minus 3 times the 2, we got the negative 6, and then we drop down our negative 1. And after doing all the math, we see thir negative 13 is equal to 12 minus 12. 25, which is a negative 13, so it worked. So just make sure that you check your answers because if you have scratch paper, you should be checking your answers in case you did something silly or your mind was slipping and you made a slight mistake because you might know what you're doing and just for some silly reason, your brain just goes and you make a silly mistake and you get it wrong. And then after you get your paper back, you go, oh no, I knew how to do that one. So check your answers, make sure they're okay, all right? We're going to move on to the next unit, to 3.6. And we're going to talk about clearing the equation of fractions and decimals. And we can actually do it this way with these reciprocals, okay? I'll see you there. That'll be 3.6a. Bye.